You're looking to purchase your first stock arena. You're stuck between a ceramic one and a plastic one. They're the same range, they're both Alto C. Which do you choose? Pick the plastic one. Maybe you have a couple ceramics and you're deciding between another ceramic or a plastic one. Once again, pick the plastic one. Why would I, a professional-ish ocarina player with a qualified-ish opinion, use my growing-ish platform that you can subscribe to right now, hit that button below and that like button. Why would I use that platform to make such a controversial statement? The reason is, like always, it's complicated. Here's the thing, if you're only gonna have one ocarina, you're gonna get a lot more mileage with a plastic than you would with a ceramic. Here's why. Do you know, this is not a video bashing on ceramic ocarinas in any way, shape, or form. Ceramic ocarinas can be among the best crafted, best sounding instruments you can ever see. If you're a serious ocarina performer, you should be using a ceramic ocarina. However, for day-to-day -day use, I prefer plastic and here is why. One, they are nearly indestructible. Ceramic ocarinas break really easily. Plastic ocarinas don't. If you drop a ceramic ocarina from a height as low as six inches, you'll probably break the ceramic ocarina. If you drop a plastic ocarina, I'd be far more concerned with the well-being of the floor you drop it onto. I think in my very first ocarina video, I literally yeet a plastic ocarina over my shoulder. I was, um, aiming for it to land on my bed, but, um, it hit the wall. And because it's plastic, it's super durable. So if you drop it, no problem. <laughs> Did I really just yeet my ocarina? <laughs> the wall was fine. That wall right there. And I was worried about the wall, not the ocarina. Wild. Hi, Momo. Cat. If you're a new ocarinist learning proper form and technique, there's a good chance that at some point during your training, you will likely drop your ocarina. If it's a ceramic ocarina, that's a possibly very large investment down the drain. If it's a plastic ocarina, no big deal. They're basically indestructible. Cat, stop flicking your tail in front of my... I've only ever broken an ocarina intentionally. I've never accidentally dropped or broken one. And I recognize that after a decade of playing and never breaking an ocarina, I am on borrowed time. Because of that, I always recommend a plastic ocarina to a beginner over a ceramic one. In addition to generally being far less expensive per pound of quality, they're also indestructible. You'll be, you're, you're gonna be fine. <laughs> Nothing to worry about. That indestructibility is also really useful for travel or if it's an ocarina you wanna carry with you on a day-to-day -day basis, like just throw it in your backpack, no worries. Um, in my university days, I kept this ocarina, my Knight by Noble, in my backpack 100% of the days I went to campus and brought a backpack. Always, no exceptions. I took it with me to campus, I took it with me while I was traveling. Um, and it got so much use. I never had to worry about breaking this little guy since it's plastic and like you would literally need to repeatedly strike it with a hammer or do something outrageous to break it. So because I always had it on me, it was always nice to have the ability to share music wherever I go. When I lived in Japan during the summer of 2018, this is the ocarina I brought with me. So I'm staying in Tokyo for about three weeks and one day I decide I'm gonna play music on the street. That's fun, definitely not illegal, maybe a little illegal, but I didn't know that at the time. I decide to hunker down in Roppongi in Tokyo uh, and like the evening, like around like 7 p.m. I pick a spot to play and I stand there mainly playing Studio Ghibli music. After about 30 minutes, a 30 to 40 year old salary man comes by and just like profusely thanks me for playing and hands me 2000 yen, which is about $20. I turn it down because even though I didn't know the legality of playing music publicly, I didn't want to play with fire by accepting money by playing music publicly, something like that. So I refused and um, he insisted. So after a little like polite fight of like me refusing and him insisting, I eventually accepted the money. I don't remember the song I was playing, but 
he said it reminded him of his childhood. And the special moments like that are the number one reason I got so involved with the ocarina, because I love making those moments for people. And that's why I always want to have an ocarina on me when, I, when I'm carrying any bag that can fit one. Anyways, about five minutes later, a Canadian guy and an American guy, they walk by and they're like, Ocarina boy, do you drink? And me just being like a, a naive, a, like 20, a 20 year old, which in Japan is legal drinking age. I, I just say, sure, why not? And I made friends with those guys. We hung out like four or five more times over the course of like the following like five to seven days. It was awesome. Would I recommend anyone do something as impulsive as that in general? No. Do I regret doing that? Absolutely not. It turned out fine, so... Don't worry about it. Moving on from indestructibility, number two, they are highly, highly standardized. You open Amazon, you see amazing prices on ceramic ocarinas. You're like, hmm, I should get one of these ceramic ocarinas because ceramic is better than plastic, right? You're right only if the ceramic has amazing quality control and is from a trusted maker or vendor. You buy the inexpensive ceramic ocarina on Amazon and you just like are totally disappointed and then then you think ocarinas are terrible instruments and you give up on them and you think okay I'm never gonna play the ocarina again and I will have no respect for ocarinas as an instrument. That is a real problem. As I've discussed in a previous video, inexpensive ceramic ocarinas are inconsistent, to put it lightly. If the deal looks too good to be true, it probably is. So as, as mentioned, if you want a good ceramic ocarina, buy from a trusted vendor like Imperial City, Clackle, Songbird, someone like that. If your price range is still only enough for an inexpensive ceramic ocarina, A. Save your money. B. Buy a plastic one. Those inexpensive ceramics are so universally panned because they don't have quality control. Plastic ocarinas, while generally lower quality overall in terms of sound compared to a ceramic ocarina, um, they generally have really, really standardized manufacturing processes. Basically, if the mold or design for a plastic ocarina is good, then any ocarina made using that mold or design will be good. With a ceramic ocarina, it depends on both the mold and how the maker can build the ocarina using that mold. And if there's no quality control, the ceramic ocarina is going to be problematic, where the plastic ocarina will not be. Plastic ocarinas are consistent because of that consistent manufacturing process, which is why I always recommend the Knight by Noble to uh, people wanting to buy their first ocarina or people wanting to buy a plastic ocarina for travel, etc. It's an amazing ocarina and it's indestructible, super consistent. It's a reliably great ocarina. And that brings me to number three. Plastic ocarinas can still be great instruments. I do have to reiterate, my Knight by Noble is one of my best ocarinas. That's not best plastic ocarinas, that is among my best ocarinas. My first ocarina was a plastic from STL, which I sadly don't have anymore. I gave it to a friend. And it was a great, well-tuned instrument, and it only cost me like 25 bucks at the time. So I learned to play on a plastic. Even outside of the Alto C range, my most played Soprano C is not a ceramic one. It is a plastic one. This is one that's so tiny, I, it doesn't take up space if I bring it with me. So if I need to get more projection or a higher sound, I'll just like, hey, I have this ocarina, I'ma play it. This ocarina has been my greatest bang for buck at like conventions and stuff like that, gathering a crowd and playing music, stuff like that. So plastic ocarinas can still be amazing instruments. They're just made of plastic. And because they're made of plastic, they're basically indestructible and you can take them with you to places. No worries about breaking, about losing hundreds of dollars worth of a ceramic ocarina. It's amazing. If I'm at home practicing or have a major performance or anything like that, that requires the best sound possible, of course I'm using a ceramic. There, nothing beats a well-made, well-tuned, well-crafted ceramic ocarina. But what ocarina goes in my backpack? What ocarina do I carry every day? What ocarina comes with me when I travel? 
What's the ocarina I even perform with when I travel? It's my plastic, for sure. Ocarinas can be a bit of a paradox. They're portable yet breakable when made of ceramic. The image I have for the ocarina is an instrument you can carry with you and share music wherever you go. While cases do exist to protect ceramic ocarinas and almost negate the risk of breakage, there's still the chance of like you forget to close the case, there's still too much pressure like it gets crushed and the, the ocarina breaks. I've seen both of those happen before. So I, I just don't ever want to have the risk of opening my bag and finding out my ocarina is broken on day-to-day -day use. Like of course for like Okabanda performances I'm bringing my ceramics like I want the best quality for that. But if I'm like I'm if I'm gonna spend a summer in Japan if I'm gonna go on like a two, three week long trip, I I'm bringing a plastic. I'm bringing, I'm bringing this little guy. My ceramics are by far my best instruments in terms of sound quality, but as someone who really values travel and then also having easy access to music, plastics are the instruments I actually take with me. They're nearly indestructible, they're consistently good or bad, and thus easy to recommend or not recommend, and they are amazing instruments in their own right. Perfect for travel, throwing in your day bag, or learning how to play the ocarina? I love plastic ocarinas. And I also love when you smash that like button, subscribe, and comment. I, 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 I had never even considered to make a video that was saying plastic ocarinas good, get plastic ocarinas, because I typically recommend it as like, oh get like one or two plastic ocarinas, and I still stand by that. Like get a plastic ocarina in the range or ranges that you play most. Like, I definitely have way more ceramics than I do plastics, because ceramics have a better sound quality. But I have used my plastic ocarinas so much more than I've used my ceramic ocarinas in a practical sense. Which is why I recommend everyone have at least one plastic ocarina in the range they most like to play. I recommend the Night by Noble, um, but there's a lot of great options. I'll have a link in the description for Night by Noble, but otherwise, that's the video. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. <laughs> you thought I was gonna go bombacious with that. No, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be gentle for this outro. So drink water, um, wash your face, um, use moisturizer, and uh, get enough sleep. Bye. Bye.